because I know for a long time I would catch fish in certain situations and I just knew that this pattern was working, but I had no idea why until I really dove into it and understood what was going on and you know why those fish were, were keyed in on the certain, certain things that they were. So let's go ahead and get it started, Bill. Um, but it, it definitely is a, it's something that can be a very, very productive pattern. And I mean, a, a bait spawn is, a, you know, I mean, you're talking about the same thing that a, a bass spawn is. It's that, it's that bait fish's way of reproducing, you know, it's that way of creating more young to, uh, you know, to further their generations. But bass will definitely take advantage of these situations anytime they get a chance to. And it's just the same thing as what, you know, when bass are spawning, bluegill will come in and try to raid their nest. So it's, it's exactly the same thing. They know that each other are vulnerable during that time frame, when those fish are spawning, they know that there's an opportunity there for an easy meal for a bluegill to, to feed on a bass's eggs and for bass to feed on bluegill when they're spawning, that they're a little bit you know, easier to feed. So um, it's just a, an easy way for those fish to take advantage of the other. But the big thing with all different types of bait and when they spawn is they don't all spawn in the same manner. And, and we're gonna go through each one of these that are the more common ones and kind of talk about some differences in the way that that particular species spawns and then how that relates to how you catch the bass that are that are relating to them. For shad, we're gonna break it down first since it is hands down the most common one. They like a hard piece of cover to spawn on. They'll, they'll use, you know, they'll use just a hard kind of a clay bank, but the, the stuff I've got listed there, docks, you know, especially a floating dock, not so much a pole dock, because you've just got those individual isolated poles, but more so a floating dock is much more effective than those black floats, styrofoam floats, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, grass is a really, really good one, whether it's water willow, it's hydrilla, any of that type of stuff, those, those shad really like to spawn around grass, even just flooded grass, stuff that's flooded, you know, because the lakes come up some. Those, those shad will really get in that stuff good. Riprap's another great one. Um, and then it, a lot of times you'll see them in, in a, in a treetop, you'll see them spawning in a treetop too. And anything green, it does seem like if there's an, uh, an abundance of, of brush and grass and stuff in the water, they tend to flock to anything that's green. You know, if, if you've got a, a big green lay down, a, a fresh oak tree laying in the water, they're much more apt to spawn in that green tree than they are a big dead lay down that's right next to it. So that, that is one thing that does seem to be key with shad is that they want to, they tend to be drawn to that to that green stuff. That top water tends to play, again, more so in clear water. You know, a walking style bait um, is, is what I like when those, those fish are keyed in on a shad spawn. I really like a walking style bait. That's a storm top walker. It's an excellent walking bait. But then if those fish are really in, you know, or in grass or some type of heavy cover, a, a frog is really hard to beat during a shad spawn. And that's what I was catching them on at Toledo Bend. The shad were spawning first thing in the morning and the fathead minnows were spawning later in the day. And in the morning, I would catch them good on that on that Terminator popping frog up in that grass when they were spawning and stuff. And uh, But as the day went on, uh, it, it changed why those fish were there, but they were still there in that hay grass. And that was, it was a really, really good way to catch them. You know, the bluegill spawn is, is a little bit different than, than the shad spawn. It typically happens later in the year. Um, and one thing on, on shad, on bluegill, on most all these spawns, they do relate heavily to the moon phase. You know, a, a bass spawn, that there's, there definitely is a moon phase deal that, that goes into effect on that, and they, they will key in. You know, you always hear they, they spawn on this particular full moon or that moon or whatever it may be. And, and I do, I, I know that bass do care about the moon phase, but if everything else lines up perfectly, they'll go ahead and spawn whether the moon's full or not. Bait fish, on the other hand, to me, are, I mean, dude, it's like clockwork. The first full moon in May, where I live, that's when the shad spawn. I mean, that's the, that late April, early May, full moon, that's when the shad spawn goes on at my house. It doesn't matter if the water's 64 or 74, that's when the shad are gonna spawn. And bluegill, all those bait fish are that way. They're much, much more moon phase oriented so those full moons are, are really, really important. Um, and that's, that for, for bluegill, they're typically, a, you know, like a 75 and up kind of thing is when they're gonna be spawning heavy around those full moon, you know, within, within a week of that full moon is when they're gonna, gonna do most of their spawning. 
and they like a protected cove, you know, a pocket somewhere where they're they're out of the wind. You know, they're they they may spawn on the main lake sometimes, and I've seen some uh, some images on on side imaging that where I found bluegill beds that were out a little bit deeper, more on the main lake. But the ones you're going to find that are up shallow, they're going to be somewhere where it's protected. They're going to be somewhere where it's out of the wind, where they don't have to worry about you know a lot of wave action to mess up their beds. And that's I mean that's a great picture. I actually just found that picture online, but that's a great picture of what a bluegill bed looks like. You know that one's up pretty shallow there, and the, those bass will will use those brim that are up there as a food source and they kind of just Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their touted special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.